Hello, everybody. Welcome to a presentation of the TomTom Tom Gear Runout Kit. Uh, my name is Tom Zhang, Senior Engineer for Industrial Kiln and Dryer. And again, I have with me uh, Thomas Stitz, the co-founder, the inventor of TomTom Tom Tools. Done a lot of great work. We've done a lot of um, overall good uh, discussion sets. Um, some housekeeping rules. Um, for everybody watching, please have the, um, please make sure you can see us on the webcams. Um, if you see me, if you see Thomas, then uh, you are on the right track. Uh, because today we have some special live demos that I want to show. Uh, we have actually some surprise uh, guests on the backside, um, to, to show the, um, to show some details on the census. So without further ado, um, similar last time, uh, this is a very short, brief overview. TomTom Tom Tools, um, they make excellent tools on diagnosing systems, diagnosing rotary kilns while they're in operation. They're in, uh, their tools are in 50 different countries. They've been found in 2007. And again, uh, I, I got with me Thomas uh, today, and, and he's got he's got some cool stuff to show us, and he's got some new stuff to show us, and we got some... Uh, 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 interesting things to show live today. So just a little bit of background. Um, this is a gear runout presentation. Most rotary kilns and many bald mills are driven by a gear and opinion system. One of the measures or sets of measures that's important is the runout. The more perfect the runout, the, the longer the life uh, the system will have the better the performance the system to have. It, it's overall, um, in a sense, trying to keep everything aligned, but from, a, from, a, from an oscillation standpoint, in and out, left and right. So traditionally, what, what has to be done is unit has to be down. And as you know, with kilns, it takes a decent amount of time, 24 hours to 48 hours to shut down and 24 hours to 48 hours to turn back. Um, to start up again. And in order to measure the runout, the unit has to be down, has to be cool, has to be safe, has to be locked out. And um, the measurement is a dial indicator. And there's, as you can see in the pictures, is a dial indicator placed in multiple locations. And those readings will give you whether it is um, eccentric or a little bit more out or not, or, or, or the runout is high or not, and you make corrections based off of that. From an installation standpoint, that's a great measurement set. But from a diagnostic standpoint, while, the, while your unit's in production, that's not a very practical set. This is where uh, um, TomTom Tom has created um, a measurement set for the gear called the uh, Inductive Distance Measurement Toolkit. Um, what it is, is it's a um, uh, contactless sensor that can measure the distance between the sensor and the gear, and it can be done while the unit's running. The sensors are highly accurate, um, and they, and they um, do not um, affect, get affected by a grease or a dust or bill, so you can actually measure through the grease that's currently on the unit, um, as well as you can measure um, lots of different amounts on irregular surfaces too. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, uh, turn off my screen, and I will show um, Thomas. And Thomas will show the details of uh, the kit itself. So Thomas, wants you to uh, take it away for us? Yes, thank you, Tom. Thank you for the introduction. Yes, um, as you already mentioned, we, we uh, want to measure during normal operation, whenever possible, not to interfere with the tin operation. So that's why we, we found this uh, sensor very useful so that our uh, eddy current or inductive sensors, distance sensors, so they give us a voltage signal output depending on the distance we have 
here to the gear. It's a metallic surface is needed, preferable steel, mild steel, or uh, it's ordinary steel, or steel also like we have on the earth here. Um, then it, they are quite precise. So they measure the distance in front of that. As you see here in the, in the case, where we have, we have placed different sensors, we have bigger and we have smaller, hmm? we have smaller sensors. And, uh, you know, as they are very, very nice and, and robust, uh, the disadvantage of these sensors, they don't reach very far, so they have limited um, distance range. Here we are talking about 15 millimeters, so it's a bit more than half an inch. We have a uh, sensing range. Everything which is further cannot be seen by the sensor. So that means when we have a smaller sensor, the range is even smaller. So that's why we have different sensors to cover different distances. So um, Thomas, uh, uh, yes. you said uh, the sensors are different sizes um, because of the measurement range that they have. And I think you said robust. Uh, they're, 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 uh, they can take a lot of uh, heat and they can be very, um, they can uh, be in very dirty environments and they can sustain uh, high temperatures too, right? Yeah, with the temperature, we still have to be careful because it's electronics inside. So I see. Uh, uh, with, with 70 degrees, 80 degrees, it's not, uh, it's very, it's not very nice for them. So stay cold wherever possible, don't overheat, but even if, you know, they are not very expensive, they are, uh, it's a standard sensor from the market, so if you would burn one, it's not, uh, it's not a big deal. So, uh, but mm -hmm. up to now, I, I don't know any damages, but on the gear, which we are talking now, usually the gear is anyway not that much hot. When we talk about other application, like a run out on a, on a tire of the kiln, then we have to, to hurry up a little bit that we don't expose the sensor too long. So that's the disadvantage. But the, the good thing, as you said, I mean, they are very robust uh, with the dirt. So the grease or oil or whatever, it doesn't matter. So they are tight. So also water tight. And uh, so no problem. Um, so um, I see you got a you got a black box in that kit. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that black box? Yes. So. When we have the sensor, yes. When we have the sensor, we have the cable. The cable is a standard cable with uh, this uh, M12 sensor connectors. We added some more here with angle that we we, we can also when we have uh, restricted. Uh, or narrow space, then we have angle connectors, we have the, the cables with the straight ones, the sand ones, so we have a, a variety of cables with different lengths. And, and what else do we need for the sensor? We need a strong, strong magnet stand. So with the magnet stand, we can, we can connect the sensor with almost all the in all in all direction so we have this uh, spacer sticks and then at the end in the front we place the sensors and um, the magnets they are very strong to not that they are not that they do not move during the measurement and also that we don't lose them so be careful when you measure on a, on a gear when it's in operation that nothing falls into the gear. So please make sure that you only measure on a safe on a safe place where nothing can get trapped into the gears. You need to watch for a, for a safe access. Um, this can be done. Maybe in some kilns they need to do a, a safe uh, opening or a safe door uh, on on the on the girth gear housing during uh, a stop when the equipment is down, then this can be installed and later we can measure also during operation in the same way. So that's the magnet. 
the cable. Then what we have now, we have a, a, a new controller. So that's the, the heart of, of this, uh, <laughs> nice. that, that's the heart of, the, of this toolkit. And now we have um, uh, uh, a data collector which connects via Bluetooth to the computer. So we get the live data, not via cable anymore, as we had before, via USB. Now it's via Bluetooth. So you can hop around with your computer around the machine, and you don't need to, to worry about the cable. The only cable connection you need to do is from, this, uh, from the sensor to the box with the cable. We added two more input channels. Now we have six. But for the gear on out, we need two or three. Um, yes. So it's uh, with the battery inside and uh, charging and uh, it should run. It should run for a day. So plenty of time to measure because the measurement when you have the sensors installed goes very quick. It just takes you a few minutes and then you have your measurements. Uh, what else? We have Oh, if you have doubts, we still have the traditional <laughs> dial indicator where you can compare. But of course, not, in, uh, not on the gear tip. You, you will lose it immediately. And anyway, <laughs> right. uh, the gear needs to be clean. The gear needs to be clean for that, but not for the sensor. I mean, right. that's, that's uh, a double check for the, for the sensor. Let's say you're in the field and you're not comfortable you know, with what that distance doubts. is. Yes, yes, yes. Then we have a special one. This is a, a very flat one, and it measures here. So we found that mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and we added it to the kit. With that, you can measure to the side. It's not in front. It's here to the side. So when we have very narrow space, maybe under a cover to the side, the, the wobble of the girth here, maybe we have only a tiny space, we can use that. And then we have a very big one, that's the biggest, but this is not recommended for the, not for the gear, it's not for that, it's more for the side face of the gear when we have a, a big surface, or wobble of the tire, but only if you really mm -hmm. need, if you really need that big range. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. Oh, uh, I forgot here. What about, uh uh, yes. What about that circle? I see a I see a circle plate. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. That one here it can yeah. be used as a reference. It can be mm -hmm. used as a reference. Here is a heat resistant magnet. You can place it even on the king shell. We have also extensions here which we can put between to make that longer. Then we can mm -hmm. put it on the king shell and get like a trigger signal if we would like right, to have right. because what we are uh, doing and uh, i'm not sure about your demo later do it uh, do you do it by hand or do you do it by trigger we currently do it by hand but that, that that's why i, I brought that up because that'd be a cool one to, to show later um, as we continue on the journey Oh yes, we can uh, we, we can explain later. It's normally yeah. it's not really needed. It's not really needed for the normal application because uh, you know the measurement it goes too quick and by by triggering by hand it's good enough for the measurement because the yeah. software is finding the 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 rotation itself. So it does not really require the very precise um, uh, trigger point. Yes, so that's mm -hmm. why we go normally by triggering by hand, giving the indication when, when we have a full turn, we push the, the button, and with that we are good enough. We will see. Right. Well, that's cool, Thomas. Um, uh, that is the toolkit itself. Um, like uh, Thomas said before, I'm going to show my webcam. Um, before... Um, some of the new developments, um, the sense, uh, the the measure, the controller 
have a USB cable now that it's Bluetooth, it frees us up even more. Um, the sensors, I mean, we've, I would say we've abused the crap out of them and they work relatively well. I mean, I don't think I call Thomas on getting a new uh, sensor. It's more on if the, um, and even the cables are uh, uh, quite robust. Uh, the only issue is damaging the tip of the cables. Uh, if it gets crushed or something like that, but the cables themselves are even relatively robust. Um, one time, and, and the cables are the same with the measuring wheel. I think one time I, I had a cable up there for a very, very long time, and it was still fine. And we're talking uh, discharge in. Um, it got pretty hot. We had a weight. So, I mean, robust is a very good word to describe all these so what I want to do next is I'm going to turn on our live demo area. Um, I'm going to have, oh, there we go. Okay. So what we got, guys, is I want to show the sensor in action, okay? And these gentlemen there, they are uh, going to help us uh, get to that point. So I want to introduce some of the guys, and I'll, I'll go with their names a little bit. So I got on the left, uh, Raymond Average, Ray Average. He's going to do uh, a lot of the kiln access surveys. And the far right is Dave uh, Miller, same thing. And Jason is probably someone everyone uh, works with on the back side of it when you have questions, and he's here to set a lot of things up. Um, before we turn it on, um, again, everyone has all their PPE on. This is a live unit. Uh, we, um, take, we took the precautions to keep everything uh, safe. This uh, unit is locked out until we turn it back on. The, um, also, the placement of the sensor is on the upturning side. It's a much safer area than the downturning side. So we've taken a lot of the necessary precautions to make sure this is um, as safe as possible. So without further ado, why don't you guys go ahead and zoom in to the sensor itself? Okay. And, I right. and I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Yep. So this is a setup for the uh, IDM sensor for the um, actual unit. So typically... Um, it won't be so, it, you, you'll have to be a very, very cautious placing the sensors on because the unit will be running. Uh, this is just a lot easier to see. On the left, it's the sensor for the side of the gear to measure the axial movement. And then the sensor on the face of the gear is to measure the radial set of, uh, radial section to get the radial run out. So both of these are there to measure the radial and axial run out. And what I will do is I will, um, while, if you guys can see that, then you'll ultimately be able to see details in terms of the, um, the view. So right now, what you guys see is um, the measurement studio being brought up. So this is a uh, set that we are using here um, in Louisville. And uh, we are going to um, the gear runout section on the uh, measurement studio. Go ahead and do that, Ray. So you add gear runout. And while you're adding gear runout, there will be a pop-up that will say um, radial sensor, what the radial sensor should be. So we put an 18 millimeter sensor on it. So go ahead and do that. Perfect. And then the next one should be the axial sensor, and we have the same sensor on it. Awesome. Go ahead and click that. Perfect. So now um, there's there's this is a this is a nuance for you guys. So you see Ray's me, uh, moving the uh, axial over to the smooth side, okay? And the reason why is the measure on the axial right now is on the smooth side of the gear, not the teeth itself. So the two, the two buttons on the left and right uh, is either if you're on the gear teeth or you're on a smooth surface. So if you're on a gear teeth, um, do that. Now, the other trick is if you don't see it, 
then that's uh, that's a reason to um, to if you don't see the measurements, it's a reason to click on the other one. So before you start, Ray, why don't you go ahead and get the unit turned on, and uh, we will see what the measurement looks like. Here, get it playing. So now, as you guys see, um, the green is kind of a test area of the sensor. So it's moving uh, back and forth on the gear and uh, some on the uh, axial. So go ahead and start the measure, Ray. So right now, this is a live measure of the, um, of the uh, uh, system. So you got the gear coming around. And then it looks like um, the axial may be yeah. So Ray's going to adjust it to see if there's a there's a. Sometimes what will happen is it'll be too close or too far. And this is something uh, for the people watching to uh, work with because if it's uh, too far away, you'll actually see it on the data set. If it's too close, you'll see it on the data. Well, you won't see it on data, so you'll see it uh, get hit by the uh, by the uh, gear itself. But right now, what you guys see is the axial movement, and then uh, we can always adjust the uh, or, or not the axial, the radial movement, the green. And on the axial movement, once it gets uh, uh, at a at a good spot, we can we can get more details on that. So overall, right now, what Ray just did is he uh, clicked the trigger, as Thomas alluded, uh, uh, what would be a revolution. So ultimately, now we're going to wait approximately another 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the RPM that the guy set, and we will continue on from there. So once, um, once we get that going, um, the SAR itself will start to uh, generate a... Um, a, a curve ultimately and then from there it will tell you details on say the eccentricity and the total run out and the peak angles etc cetera, etc cetera. so right now we are close to a second trigger you guys hit the second trigger Okay, so that's close enough. So um, why don't you guys go, so right now, I'm looking at the tiny view. Um, eccentricity is about 0.5 millimeters, total run out 1.2 millimeters. For this gear, it's pretty good because it used to be an inch. Go to the uh, radar chart, please. So this gives you kind of a rough idea. So we, we missed a little bit on that window. So this is where, when you guys are on and you miss the trigger or, or the trigger's off slightly, you can actually see that. So then you could just easily redo the measure because this is, uh, so far we've been talking, it's been roughly two to three minutes. So it's a relatively quick measure. So appreciate it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and turn, turn your uh, webcam off. And uh, I'll show Thomas and I again. Um, and I'll actually give, if you want, Thomas, I'll give you... Um, access yes and i think you have some uh core data that you would like to show <laughs> yes yes i have i have many autos from different kilns so right um, one of them i can show you here here the axial was uh, very little here Mm -hmm. But the radial, we had some, you know, these dots here. That's the radial measurement. We have some right. round, uh, some roundness and some eccentricity issues. Not much, but uh, you see. can see here. Uh, so the, the gear is not perfectly round. We see it at that one, that value here. When we go over the number, when we put place the curve there on the on the number, you will see the explanation. So the roundness deviation shows you how much it would it deviates from the perfect circle. 
and there right. is the, the eccentricity. So that means how much is the gear off center? So um, mm, if, right. if it would be, uh, it can be any kind of potato shape, but as the, the, the average of all points are exactly, uh, gives exactly the center, it can have zero eccentricity, but roundness deviation. Or the other way around, if a gear is perfectly round, but it's not mounted exactly in the center, then we get zero roundness deviation, but we get eccentricity. And eccentricity, mm. together with the roundness deviation, that is the, the runout or the total runout which we see, which we are facing in the gear mesh. Um, the same or similar applies for the, for the axial, for the wobble. And the wobble is shown here. So this gear on out, uh, this gear is, is perfectly nice. So it's only zero uh, plus minus 0 0.5 we have in total. And it's very straight. So it's below one millimeter in straightness. Uh, I have uh, other, another gear here. This is a, a very special one. This gear is made of 12 pieces. Usually we have... Oh, oh wow. Yeah, usually on kills we have, we have two pieces, so the, the girth here is made of two pieces uh, because of size and also uh, to install. Uh, how, how to install on a kill when, when it would be a single piece, a single ring, then we would have to cut the kill to place it. So um, that's why usually the gears are made of two pieces. But this example was on a kiln and it's made of 12 pieces. So small segments. And uh, when we measure it, we see that we have 12 times, we see a little bit of a deviation. We, we can see these pieces. You see? Oh, yeah. We can see these pieces. But the In the software, it looks maybe a little bit uh, ugly or we think yeah, it's not very nice but when we look on the values they are very small so um, the roundness is plus minus 1.5 millimeter which is, is, is not much if we think that this gear has maybe a diameter of um, 7 meter or something so it's a huge it's a huge gear but only uh, or six meter, six, seven meter out the diameter, but only 1.5 millimeter um, roundness deviation to the perfect circle. And uh, we have um, eccentricity only 0 0.5 millimeter. So it's a... Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. It's a very nice example, yes, of a special gear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, I, I don't think I've ever seen a 12-piece that uh, clean before like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting. So uh, another another example here, the sensor was out of range. You see it here. We, right. we in the axial one in the wobble, we missed some data. It was out of range, but you see the the software was still is still able to fit a sine curve into that. So that means mm -hmm. the data is still correct, even if we miss some points. Um, and you can see it here, that's the radial one. And here is radial, right. the green one, and the blue is the axial one. And uh, we can see the values here. Right. Yep. Hey, um, I, I think you mentioned on, on your new version, you can actually show the gear wobble on the kiln. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, you, you, yes, you can switch here to kiln, then you get the 3D the view on the kiln. Here on that kiln was only the gear measured. If we would have shell run out or other measurements, we could uh, include them into the same into the same uh, model. And here you see the gear. Right. When I turn it, you see the gear. Right. That that's pretty cool. And uh, this is especially interesting when we have the shell run out as well. You know, then we mm -hmm. see how wobble of the gear gear and together with the tiger and with the shell, how they are correlating. Mm -hmm. um, 
I will show right. you in a, in a later session when we talk about shell deformation measurement with the laser. Then yeah. we, I can show you how um, how they they can be linked together because the, the gear yeah that would be in, cool yeah because usually the gear was installed properly straight in the beginning but afterwards something happened to the kiln and then the Rona got affected and usually it goes affected by by deformation when the shell gets overheated. So, and then we struggle at the end with the gear on out. Right. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty cool to see those examples. Uh, yeah, overall, I mean, this is a very powerful tool just on the gear run out. I'm going to change it back to my, uh, my view. Okay. So, overall, this is a... Um, it's ultimately a very, very nice uh, way to measure runout overall, okay? So Thomas uh, already explained some of the definitions on eccentricity, roundness deviation, and what the total runouts are. Um, so again, these are relatively straightforward to view on the chart, so we won't go through too much detail on it. Um, a few things on the sensors. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas. You typically like to start with the medium sensor on on the girth gears of this size. You want it to be um, a little bit smaller than the face of the gear teeth, right? Unless the um, runout is so high, then it doesn't matter so much on the bigger sensor. Yes, yes, we should use the smallest possible. If the range is enough, mm -hmm. but still, I mean, I made I made also checks with the bigger one, and even if we not can, I, I mean, even if the tooth is a little bit smaller than the sensor, the error which we which we get is is, is often we can neglect it. It's very limited. Right. Yes, but still, right. I, I recommend to use the smallest possible, but still, uh, covering the full range. Uh, then to make uh, then to use a too small sensor. Oh. Right, work our way up. Um, the other thing is uh, the measure for this one is relatively quick, so changing a sensor out is um, you know uh, it's not that bad to change it. Now putting it back and making sure that you're safe and you're not caught and making sure that the sensor can see that uh, typically is what takes a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, you'll just get grease everywhere. So when you do this, it's good to have a way to clean yourself or just clean the general area. And please, when you are done, this is a tip for um, from us, is when you're done, clean the sensor before you put it back in the case or you'll have grease everywhere. Um, these are just some of the details that we learned in the field that we have to clean again. Okay. Um, so overall, uh, what you guys have seen is the small sensor, which is the 12 millimeter, the 18 millimeter is the medium sensor, and the large sensor is the 30 millimeter. The 40 by 40 was the one that Thomas showed that had the biggest range that was towards the back of the case. And then the yellow one is that flat one. So this is to get the narrow ranges and the narrow areas. Uh, any comments you want to make on these, Thomas? Yeah, I have something uh, to that for also for safe application. We are um, doing some, some uh, or we will provide in future easier way to, to mount uh, the sensor. So we have in mind that maybe we can go on the, on the housing of a girl's gear and we place uh, a threaded uh, fitting. We weld it to the housing and then we can tap in this fitting here with the seal and then we can come with the sensor here on the front and then we push it in until we reach the, the gear and then we tighten and then we can measure in the same way so that's so is the, that a, something you're you're trying to um work with the side of the gear or the radio area of the gear or both yeah, maybe both. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So, I mean, then it makes it a lot easier. 
Yes, so instead that may of be the a, magnet, a, so if we go as a, it's more than for a routine, if we have a kiln where we go and measure frequently, then we can do that. Yeah, we can work with the, with the plan or the customer that, that wants us to go ahead and make a tap on it for it. Okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to change it back to me. Okay, so here's some of the sensor specifications. You guys have seen some of the measurement results. Um, this is actually uh, one, um, one of the one of the older results, and the newer ones, uh, you know, Thomas has slicked it out with some uh, uh, better visuals, but overall the core data is the same. Um, like I said, down here you got a sprocket-like gear um, radially, and then more like a tire or a rotor radially. So again, the sprocket is more for um, teeth, right? So oscillations back and forth. Because if you uh, if you measure a gear teeth with a circle, uh, you'll see a big old. It, it'll look like a or those. It's like a fill. It, you'll see the green, but the bottom will be all filled in, and it'll be. Uh, you'll have to discern it on your own. So I do like that the software go ahead and gets rid of the outside measures very quickly. Mm -hmm. We shown some more of the data. Now this one, uh, Thomas, looks like it's probably not all that great. I see here a uh, close to five millimeter uh, runout. So uh, less less ideal measure. So if your kiln looks like this, your uh, girth gear looks like this, um, probably uh, something to dig more into. Um, yeah, so. but you know, Tom, it's always a question of amplification with the uh, measurement. Because we measure, we well, measure very tiny uh, distances, and if we only buy right, right. it, then it gives this kind of, uh, of, of shape. Right, right. Just to give you guys an idea, the, the, the big sensor, the 30 millimeter sensor, is roughly half an inch. So think of something that's 20 feet or more in diameter on the gear or, 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 or uh, gear teeth diameter. Um, or six meters or, or seven meters in, in, in diameter, then you're looking at 15 millimeters, okay? You're, it's so small um, that, I mean, the, the margin for error in general is very low, okay? So, so keep that in mind, like Thomas said, on just the overall magnitude of what you're measuring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so we talked about uh, gear. Go ahead. Yes, this depends also in the size of the teeth. So usually the kiln gears, they are made with a big module, so they have big teeth. And that's why they, they can allow a little bit of, uh, of change in the, in the engagement. But if we have smaller teeth, then we can afford much less variation. So that's why it has to be that precise. And the most important is that we always have clearance and not get locked into the gear. So that would be very dangerous that the girth gear would, uh, would uh, get locked on the pinion and we would overload the pinion and we would damage the, the drive. Right. So for that reason, we have to check what is the narrow area and do we still have enough clearance. On the other hand, if right. we are too far out, when we are too far out, then we have a high bending stress on the teeth and the teeth might break. And we have a very high load on the, on the tooth flanks, which gives uh, deformation, cold flow, uh, we can have uh, pitting and uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, tooth damage. So that's why we need to run not too close and not too far. So we should run in the middle. And we can only run into the middle, in the middle of the, or in the proper engagement if we not have any run out. So the more run out we have, the more variation we have, and uh, we cannot allow too much. So depending Right, on right. So it is a balancing out on the, on the gears. Because um, you can either bottom out or you'd be too far away and, and you can cause damage on the teeth, damage on breaking the shaft. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can damage, and these are not cheap fixes. 
Um, so the last few parts of the slides are, okay, so when you, when you get the IDM sensor, you're not just able to measure year run out, but this is where you can quantify tire wobble, as you can see here. Um, Thomas, would you say uh, if there's high relative uh, movement or, or high creep, the tire gets loose? Um, that's one of the contributing factors to wobble? No. No. Oh, okay. No, there we no. go. <laughs> no, no. Tell the, me more. The tires, the tires they are uh, mobile uh, usually because of the deformation in the shell. If the shell, they follow uh -huh. the shell. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, cool. And when we get a shell deformation, like in the picture there below, then we see that the tire also starts to wobble. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks for the clarification on it. Um, so then the second one is a crank or a dog leg um, at the uh, tire or um, at the tire. So uh, tell me more about that, Thomas. Yes. Um, when the kiln gets uh, uneven temperature, uh, on one side more than on the other side, then it starts to, to bend a little bit because the thermal expansion will make, uh, you know, make the straight tube make it a little bit curved. So it, it will mm -hmm. get a crank, we call it a crank, because it comes from the crankshaft. Um, right, right. And then we get on when we have that, then we get uneven load distribution on the on the piers. So when we have uh, on the upper picture, the crank is up, so we we release the middle pier, and the pier on the inlet and on the outlet they get overloaded, and half a turn later, then the middle gets uh, much more load and the other ones less. So we shift. With each turn, we shift uh, the, the load from one pier to the other. And this is dangerous when we get that because we get overload on the tires and the support roller shafts. And um, it's not a good, um, not good situation. And this situation can be easily measured by sensors we use for that the smallest one because it's, you know, this uh, variation of the of the roller shaft painting is very limited, it's very small, but still we can right. measure it that. It's maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, liter. it's not much. But this is the, the change we have in the deflection of the roller shaft. And this right. we measure with the, same, with the same tool. So this is a pretty consequential um issue if you if it does exceed it right yes so this is the the main problem for bro, uh, for cracks in a in a tire in the kin or broken roller shafts mm, okay wow that's pretty cool so again guys uh, uh when you when you measure when you want this to measure the gear run out um, that's a great preventative maintenance to do but know that you can do um, tire wobble um, crank or roller shaft bending measures along with it. Um, I do have a question on the video for this. Well, um, these two are, are um, actually not really a part of the scope of this presentation. If you do want video showing details of it, um, um, uh, the websites that, that we have in conjunction with Thomas, uh, the, there are instructional videos that are on the TomTom website and on our website and on YouTube that can show details on how to take these measures and the, and the results. And um, you go to the, um, you can also get the core manuals on it too. So overall, today we did some live demos. We did the gear run out demo. Um, shown how the actual measurement works and the uh, um, if it, uh, if you can see I like I like seeing something live uh, Thomas shown some of the new things um, one of the things is moving the uh, controller to a Bluetooth system um, he's shown some data sets on nice gears uh, segmented gears 
and we went through some concepts on the tire wobble and uh, the run out. If you guys have more questions, um, feel free to uh, contact us at www.industrialkiln.com, 877-316-6140, or uh, contact at industrialkiln.com, send an email to that. This is session two that we are done now um, of the gear run out. Next week, we will do the measuring wheel. Um, and uh, that, that one going to be a pretty neat. This is where we can talk a little bit on the tapers, et cetera, on that. Without further ado, we're essential. You are too. We're here. We're open. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay sane. Goodbye. Good job, Thomas. Bye. Going to end it.